we're going to dive into the modeling process right now with this basic exercise on basically placing primitives in a scene. Um, the process we're about to do by no means is a 100% workflow ready way to model, but what it will do for you is kind of give you a grasp on how to move around in the interface and how to work with silhouettes and uh, structural um, elements within Maya. So I've gone ahead and let me shut this down real quick. Um, I have a picture here of this mansion uh, in New Jersey and we're gonna go ahead and rough out uh, and proportion out this basic model only using primitives. We're not going to add any shapes, we're not going to combine anything, we're just going to stretch and um, move specific images and kind of create a simple shape here. So let's go ahead and get started. And uh, again, I'm not looking for level of detail here. I'm just looking for a basic understanding that you guys can move things around. So go ahead and follow along with me. Um, let's go ahead and open our scene and let's uh, start by creating a column. And again, we're not gonna even load any pictures here in Maya. We're gonna do, uh, you know, looking at this picture again, we know it's a cube or a rectangle um, and as well as a base for the house and then looks like one for the chimney and then maybe one for the trim of the house. So let's go ahead and start with the biggest element first and that's the base of the house. So let's start by creating a cube and we know that's gonna be relatively big. So I'm hitting R for scale and universally scaling it. Then I'm hitting W and I'm gonna move that base up and F for focus here. Uh, if I look at that picture, and I'm actually going to load this up in preview so I don't have to keep going back and forth here. But if I look at this picture here, I know that it's wider than it is taller. So I will just take this and scale it out. And I'm going to just estimate here. And let's go back to the picture. Now maybe I can start dealing with these columns. Um, these columns look like there's one, two, three, four, five, six columns. Um, in reality, if I use my proportion techniques, um, it looks like the column is roughly, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17. So there's probably like two columns that could fit in between roughly about 17 wide. So let's go ahead and create a column. We know the height of the column. So W to move it out. Then we'll scale up our column. And we know we have 17 um, column spaces, so roughly. But what we'll do is we'll kind of, um, we're gonna estimate it just because we're, this is only an exercise. And I know the column looks a little heavier and chunkier than this, so I'm gonna Scale this out uniformly using the R key. And I'm gonna use my grid. I can even right click and go to vertex mode and pull down. Now, a good tip is to go to space bar and go to maybe your front or side view and then turn your wireframe on shaded. And then you can kind of line up the specific elements in which you, uh, in which you wish to make. So there we go. Now, that space doesn't look right, so I'm gonna move it out a little bit to a lot for the porch, because if we noticed, the porch uh, is about maybe a column's width in between. So if I take a column here, and then I say, okay, that's about where we're gonna do it. All right, so we have our column ready. We know we have how many columns? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, we have six columns. Now I'm not gonna copy and paste, I'm going to duplicate. So I'm gonna grab the column and hit uh, Edit, Duplicate, or Command D. And so I can move that over here, Command D, duplicate it over here, which looks good. And then Command D, duplicate over here, Command D, duplicate over here, and then Command D, duplicate over here. And I have lined those up pretty decently. Um, you can see that they're, they're roughly evenly spaced, so that's important. Um, if I wanna rename all of these, I can use my little hidden menu up here, which I'm gonna do. So I'm going to grab these all, 
you notice I just simply marqueed them over. Now at any point if I screw up and grab something, let's say it looks like this, I simply can go to object mode and click away and then re-highlight. And I'm going to click the rename function and call these uh, posts. And it will name them all posts. I'm going to name this one base. There's my base. All right. And uh, pretty good so far. All right, let's look at this in a little further detail. All right, so um, we have our columns. The columns don't look like it goes, uh, they go almost to the roof. It looks like we have another kind of section here of something that's going on. So let's go ahead and let's bring these down a little bit. So I'm going to model this down and watch. You can actually grab grab this and let's go to our side view using spacebar. And we're going to do it this way here in a second. This will be easier for us. We're going to just shrink everything down together. Perfect. Work smarter, not harder, right? All right, so let's take another cube and let's make the top roof portion. So let's scale it up. This roof portion is the white part of the roof. If I go back to my picture, it's this thick part here. So if I count, let's see, one of these, two, three, four. So if we did one, two, three, four, five, six. Six of them roughly make up um, the right proportion. So let's do, I like to do it this way. Sometimes I'll actually even do this. I'll go, I'll duplicate it. One, two, three, four. So these need to be a lot smaller. And actually then I'll just delete them. So I know that that roof is gonna need, need to be a little smaller. Command D, Command D, Command D, Command D, Command D. So that's six, so mm, looking like they need to be a little bit bigger, so I'll hit delete. And this is how I proportion. Now, that's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six. Looking like we're getting there. One, two, three, four, five, six, that's about right. All right, so we now know that is correct. We know that it goes from the top here, and we'll go to vertex mode using our right mouse button, and we will line it up to the top of this, and it goes all the way to the edge of that. Now again, we're just getting basic proportions down here. So, you know, we have a pretty rough setup of what this building is going to look like. Because remember, that doesn't overhang. Now, the next step is just to keep creating cubes. Now, I know this shape is the right length, so I'm gonna Command D, and I'm gonna pull it up, and I'm gonna scale it downward. And in this case, we know it goes outward here. And it looks like it overhangs a little bit. Roughly speaking, we want to make sure that it's even on all sides. So again, I'm, maybe I'll go to my front view here. Wireframe on shaded is so helpful. And I'll line these up. That's looking pretty good, actually. So now I have part of my roof. So again, this is a basic proportion test for you guys to kind of get you to understand how to move around in Maya, how to line things up, how to block out a scene. Again, I'm not modeling, I'm just kind of placing primitives in a shape that roughly looks like this. Um, again, I can add a few more steps here. It looks like maybe a Command D will work, and then you know, if we wanna start filleting those out, we can pull them out a little bit. Make sure I got both sides. There we go, start doing that. I could even take it a step further and start thinking about maybe how the these shapes right here, these vertices kind of go inward a little bit if I wanted to. 
There we go. Let's take a look. Looking pretty good. Um, it looks like we have another shape on top that's kind of inset. So I may just duplicate this, move it up. Let's see if it matches. It's pretty close to that, maybe a little smaller, maybe like some sort of small portion on the roof. And it's very good to do your research, you know, know how these buildings are created, understand their structure. There we go. I'm going to do a modify center pivot once more. There we are. And now all I need is the base of my model, which should be roughly this. So I'm going to hit command D, pull it down. And I'm going to kind of shrink this slightly because I don't want it to be as thick as the roof for portion reasons. And all of a sudden, slowly but surely, I'm getting a model. Now, you'll notice what I didn't do. I didn't add any edges. I didn't extrude it in. The purpose of this assignment was to get you to visually be able to block out different shapes and to do it in proportion of their actual item here. So you can see I'm looking at different proportions and I'm kind of walking my way through this. So if I wanted to put this door, this door is, if this is half of the building here, it goes a little bit over half. So if I were gonna put a door frame there, I would just add another cube. And I know if I go to front view, I know what half of my building is. So if I put this door frame in here and I go to vertex mode, right click vertex, there we go. This one does not wanna be selected. And half is about here, so let's go up just a little bit. That's kind of where my door frame would fall. So it gives me an idea, and obviously the door frame wouldn't be this thick, it would be just slightly out. It gives me an idea of what is going on. And now I have all these elements. So this is a good starting point and a basic test. Um, so if you're a beginner to, to Maya, go ahead and kind of manipulate shapes and try to model this sh building as close as you um, possibly can. Um, on the next exercise, we're gonna get a little more advanced and start adding edges and adding more pieces to these primitive shapes. And eventually we'll start learning how to connect them to uh, form more unique shapes as well.